cheese dripping. Jeez. There are few things in this world better than butter, and one of those things is movie theater butter. There's nothing like ordering popcorn at the movies and pumping that bag with thousands of calories worth of that liquid gold. Today, we're gonna see what happens when we use movie theater butter to cook some of my favorite things. We have this beautiful ribeye, a whole lobster that we're gonna inject, and of course, some fried chicken wings. This one should be very interesting, but first, let's head on over to the movies to see if we can get ourselves some butter. Ooh, nice toss. All right, we've made it to the movie theaters. Let's try to get some butter. Okay, now we're just gonna add our water bottle. All right, let's get out of here. I'm gonna be honest, that was a way better idea in my head. I had a realization as I was doing that. Do I wanna be that guy on YouTube who steals a whole bunch of butter from a movie theater? Probably not. We checked online, you can actually buy this stuff on Amazon, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so here we have our army of movie theater butter. And the first thing I noticed, which is very shocking, this stuff isn't even butter. Let's check out these ingredients. Okay, so we have soybean oil, artificial flavor, and beta carotene for color, none of which is butter. Oh yeah. The smell of this stuff is actually intoxicating. Totally brings me back to my childhood. Oh man. I don't know what they put in this stuff, but it is amazing. So we already know that this stuff absolutely transforms popcorn into the most delicious stuff ever. That's a lot. But the real question is, how does it taste when we use it to cook other things? Starting with a lobster. Now the first thing we need to do is dispatch our lobster. And a humane way I like to do it is sort of put my knife right here. I'm just gonna cover it with a towel so we don't get in trouble. Slam down very hard. You definitely wanna be aggressive right through for a nice painless death. So the next thing we're gonna do is inject our lobster. Honestly, I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea. I really wanted to find out if the flavor would come through in the final product. I was shocked by how much fit in there. So I made sure to go heavy on the injecting. Okay, so our lobster is literally completely packed with our butter. Now we're gonna sous vide it. Cooking sous vide should keep all that butter and juices inside the lobster and allow it to cook evenly. So as you can see, even after being double bagged, it's still very close to popping. So I'm gonna try adding some paper towels to act as a buffer. All right, well, this guy isn't going anywhere. I've probably bagged it five or six times. We're gonna drop it into the sous vide at 135 Fahrenheit. Okay, next up we have this beautiful ribeye. As you can see, really big cat muscle. Pretty good looking marbling as well. And this is gonna be the process. We're gonna start by poaching it in that popcorn butter take it out, then we're gonna sear it. We'll see what happens. We're just gonna season with some salt and some black pepper. Make sure to get both sides. So the first thing we'll do is fill up our pot with the butter. We're gonna let this heat up to probably 130, 140. We're also gonna add some garlic and herbs. So we'll just break apart some garlic and we're just gonna add it in. For this poaching step, I'll be keeping the oil temp relatively low to slowly allow the steak to come up to temp. It's essentially the same process as sous vide, only without the bag. Well, it's been just about an hour. I've been trying to keep the temperature around 135, 140. As you can see, 137 on the oil. Our steak is just about done. It's at 120. We're gonna pull it off and sear. It smells so amazing, wow. As you can see, the steak is still very, very soft. The internal temperature is right around 120, so it's gonna be a rare steak. Okay, so our pan is hot, we're gonna add the steak, but I just realized you're actually not really supposed to heat this stuff up. I have no idea what the smoke point is, so this should be interesting. Fortunately, I found that the popcorn butter seemed to react basically the same as standard cooking oil. The cast iron was extremely hot, allowing us to get a great sear before overcooking the inside. And I have to say, this was a pretty damn good looking steak. It sliced through like butter, and you can see how juicy it is. Cooking to the right internal temp, and starting with a steak that has good marbling is key. Our steak is complete. I gotta say, it's looking pretty good. You know I'm going for a bite from the cap. Let's do it. 
Wow, that is just a really good steak. Because we kept the pot temperature so low, you can see we have that beautiful edge to edge medium rare. It's basically just like a sous vide steak. Now, just like any steak, it's super tender, seasoned very well. But the big question, did I taste the popcorn butter? Honestly, if anything, it's very, very subtle. My feeling is because we seared it at a pretty high temp, a lot of those flavors kind of cooked off. But I do think for that lobster, since we're cooking it at a really low temperature and we also injected it like absolute crazy, I have a feeling that the flavor is gonna come through a little bit more. But before we get to that, let's make our chicken wings. Okay, we got a whole bunch of wings and we're just removing the drums here from the flats. Once you get the hang of it, you can go right through that cartilage, nice and easy. And we're also removing the wing tips. This can be a little harder sometimes. Flats and drums. So we have the far superior flats in the front and the far less superior drums in the back. But let me know which one you like better in the comments. Unfortunately, there's only one right answer, but still, let me know. I'm just keeping the seasonings extremely simple with some salt and some black pepper. And because I'm stupid and didn't wear gloves, I need to wash my hands again before I do the other side of seasoning. So, wear gloves. Our oil is up to 350. The whole kitchen literally smells like a movie theater. It's pretty awesome. We're just gonna toss these in and let them fry. Now, usually with buffalo sauce, we would add Frank's and real butter. Today, we're adding that movie theater butter. Mmm. Honestly, it feels a little weird adding essentially oil to a sauce, but it's pretty good. After about 15 to 20 minutes, the wings have reached 180F and are nice and crispy. Topped them with the sauce and gave them a toss. Finished with some parsley and blue cheese on the side. Fun fact, buffalo wings are tied for my favorite food. Let me know in the comments if you can guess what the other one is. Okay, movie theater butter taste test round two. Our buffalo wings, they're looking pretty good. A little chicken wing umbrella and the blue cheese. Clean bone. I'm trying to figure out if I can taste that movie theater butter. It's definitely a little bit different than your typical buffalo wing. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's worse. It's very good though. Let me just try one more of these. The dominant flavor is definitely the Franks. So I feel like it might be masking that butter flavor potentially, but again, a very good wing. And it for sure proves that the butter does work. You could use it to fry wings. It wouldn't hurt. But now what I'm most excited about is that lobster. Let's see if it's done. Our lobster should be just about done. Let's see what we got. And this was just an absurd amount of bagging that was necessary. If you're ever going to sous vide lobster, I'd probably recommend removing it from the shell first so you don't have to worry about the bag popping. But either way, it was looking and smelling great. I started by removing the tail meat, then got to work on the claws. Just take a look at the size of this claw. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to open this thing. Oh, oh, she's dripping. Jeez. Oh, I'm struggling here with this lobster claw. Look at the amount of juices coming off of this claw. There it is. That was easy. Okay, well, at this point, I'm completely covered in lobster juice, but we've made it. Our lobster's looking great. One thing you might have noticed is that it looks very, very soft, and that's because it's sous vide. A very different texture than if you cooked it normally, but it's completely cooked through sous vide for over three hours. Let's go for a bite. Lobster's just hard to beat. It's extremely tasty, extremely juicy. Again, because we sous vide it, the real question, did we taste the movie theater butter? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Zero taste whatsoever, unfortunately. I'm pretty sad about that, but this is what I will say. If you're ever in the extremely unlikely scenario where the only oil slash butter you have is movie theater butter, you can definitely use it because it will work. Will you taste it after cooking? Probably not. But either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.